It's time for another collaborative podcast that no one asked for. From the creators of Cases of Continuity, No New Friends, and Big Beautiful Discs, get ready for Creators United. And now, give it up for your hosts, Ryan, Dane, and Scott. That is right. You're listening to another installment of Creators United. So, welcome back to the show. That's right. If you listened to our last episode, our Halloween episode, it was a lot of fun. But now we're outside of the Halloween season. But it's before the Christmas season. We're somewhere in that middle zone, entering into a Thanksgiving. So, before we get into our holidays, we got a very exciting episode for you tonight featuring an incredibly exciting interview. We've got a bit of a strange surprise for Scott and Dane and another unfortunate impromptu prayer from yours truly. Now, who is yours truly, you ask? Well, I am Ryan, also known as the Sophisticated Gentleman, also known as RJ, also known as Sophisticated, also known as Trivia Tour Guide Ryan, uh, most notably known for the Cases of Continuity podcast. I am the Holy Spirit of this show, and joining me, as always, from uh, Big Beautiful Diz, Dane the Sun. How are you doing tonight, Dane? Hello, hello. I'm doing great. How are you Excellent. doing this evening, Ryan? I'm doing well. What's your favorite type of marmot? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um, can you come back to me? I need a minute to think about this. I'm not expecting that one. Also joining me, the father and the host of the No New Friends podcast, Scott. Scott, how are you doing tonight? I love drama. Drama <laughs> loves me. I live can you, for it. Can you elaborate on that, Scott? Uh, what kind no, of drama is going on? I cannot. <laughs> All right. And Scott, what is your favorite scent of shoe polish? <laughs> uh, I like the traditional like tar uh, scent, you know, the black scent. Uh I didn't know it had a like a name, um, but I used to love when my dad would polish his shoes because I love the smell of the shoe polish. How oh, did I, you know that? You just trick like you just tapped into a core memory, Ryan. I mean, some have called me a seer of the future. Others have said I'm just omnipresent as the Holy Spirit. What can I say? There you go. There you go. Yeah. It, 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 like, it's really weird. I'm thinking back to like my childhood when my, when my dad would polish his shoes and like, you know, he had different, different polishes or different like things that, he, you know, we do a one coat and then like one was done with a newspaper and then another with a cloth and then a different cloth. And like, it was this whole process. And I was like, gosh, I can't wait to grow up to polish my shoes. Ryan, I shit you not. I have never polish my shoes ever <laughs> i've never owned a thing of shoe polish i take that back i had doc martens at one point and like doc martens there's like a certain type of uh polish that you need to put on there every once in a while just to maintain the waterproofing on it that's that's it and i say i don't polish my shoes but that doesn't mean i don't hire someone to just polish my shoes for hey, me yeah. mm, uh, but no go. seriously i've never polished my shoes that's this is just such a funny conversation because I know you meant it as like kind of a joke, but you like tapped into this core memory that I have. You See, tapped into his was childhood. Actually, I was and... trying to bring up the memories for Dane, actually, because I know he used to work at a Marmot farm. Um, so I'm excited <laughs> that you were the one who got the memories instead. No, yeah. I don't want to that's a very sweet story. That's really, really cool to hear it about is. that, Scott, because I don't think I'm... that's something you've ever talked about on no. any show before that no. I can recall. Because no. it never, I, I never even thought about it. I never even thought about it until you brought it up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, shoe polish. It's like, and and now it's like triggering all these other memories, you know, of my mom with her sewing machine. Like she was constantly sewing because she like, she would make, she would make clothes for us and, uh, and Halloween costumes. And, and like, she started a t-shirt business for a while where she would like, just buy all this uh, printed fabric, like Mario brothers or whatever. And she'd cut out the Marios and she used puffy paint to outline them. And then she'd put these little gems on there for like the coins and all that. And she like made a business out of it where she was selling these t-shirts uh, where she, I mean, I'm sure that if it, you know, if it was 2023, she would have been put in jail for copyright infringements, <laughs> but back, in, I mean, I guess not because like Joanne Fabrics was selling the fabric. Was the, so, was the name of the t-shirt company tpublic.com slash usage no, no, slash no, no, Remy's no, no. round table. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Remy's round table, round table 19 for 19. 
And honestly, your story there would actually be a fantastic transition to my next topic if we didn't have to do a prayer first. So we'll do oh, a prayer, prayer first, okay. and then we'll kind of go to the topic of creating things, um, homemade versus factory-made, things of that nature. Well, when a man and a woman love each other very yes. much, <laughs> they hug real tight without any clothes on, and then they create a child. Interesting. Let us pray. Let us pray. <laughs> no, no, no. Keep, keep using up time. I need to find a prayer to parody. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's creating something. All let right. us pray. So here's Everybody my bow your heads. <laughs> please, uh, please, so let this us pray. prayer is based on the Brahma Gita from Hinduism. Oh, okay. Let us pray. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's uh, let, let's let's pray, please. Let's. <laughs> I was given the music in the background. <laughs> May he bestow starship troopers on all of us. May he inspire us not to put clips of Song of the Self in our episodes. May he guide us to speak about brain explosion. May he make us conscious about being able to hear Nicole over the music that's being played <laughs> in the background. Amen. 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 Or whatever they say in Hinduism. I says actually, it's the end of the bottom of this one. It says back to top. So I think they say back to top at the end what it says on the website below the prayer oh, oh so you, you must have to say it again oh, to the top of the page yeah, can, can we say mind. it again we didn't get it right the first time <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we might have to pray again all right so we were talking about scott's mom how scott's mom made a lot of things homemade um and so this kind of works into something that i was hoping to talk about because that it actually uh had sent to you chris yob of all people um because it's about things that are actually made not at home but in factories we use things that are made in factories every day so i was scrolling instagram and I saw a very strange post. So I'd like to show that to you guys here. For audio <laughs> listeners, uh, Ryan has started screen sharing. Here. It was a reel of a woman working, making some food. <laughs> and the caption... <laughs> can someone read the caption? I, I, can. I, I can. She has been working for two years, but she is still working at this rate. Should I keep her or resign her? <laughs> So this randomly popped up, and I was like, what is this? Why is this on my feed? I found out the sweatshop in China has its own Instagram. <laughs> wow. So I started scrolling through the reels, and they're the strangest things I've ever seen. <laughs> so they're talking about the efficiency of the people that are working there. So, like, here's one about, you know. Supervisor wants to compete with his supervisor. He doesn't know the supervisor it can be sized out of three people. This is the company that Scott's mom owned. This is how he gets all of his money. <laughs> this is how he lives in a gated community. Right. Um. Then there's. This is the job like, that Rachel has as well. The this supervisors are trying to beat the workers in the speed of making <laughs> items. Um. There's. What is this account called? So I can link it in the description. It's called Buyer Star Kitchenware Factory. <laughs> oh, no, okay, okay, you can go to the you can go to the description. You can you can give it a follow. But don't give them any it. likes. Don't give me follow. We don't <laughs> want to support a sweatshop. <laughs> but this was too weird for me not to talk about it in some form of content. Um, there was one that popped up talking about like, should I replace this person or not? Um, yeah. Oh, this is an interesting one. Um, kind of a dark one as well. He wanted to take leave to go home and to get married. And his boss gave him seven days of leave to replace his work. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Like, really, really it's dark the... stuff. So. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to the. Go back to that one. Go back to that one. Can we look at the comments on some of The this? comments are absolutely. <laughs> Not wild. okay. He marry at work. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. We need the poo. We need the poo. That, that's the president of China. <laughs> yeah. Too You're... much children anyway. Execute wife and all. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. You can't escape the factory. You can't run. You can't hide. You will always return. Like this is just the weirdest thing I've ever come across. Like I I needed to share it with somebody because where where like, in china is this can we like go here and do a, a remote i, I episode? don't want to go here like, because 
<laughs> and if we're being very, because I, I intended to bring this up humorously, but then bring it into a very serious thing, because like I click on the link, they have a website. You go to their no. website. They're selling all these things. These people are putting in like an ten insane percent amount of time off too, buy ten for fifteen dollars ninety two cents. Right? There's a sale. There's it's a ten percent off sale. And so th this is strange. And it's kind of funny. We're laughing about it. And it's not funny. It's not funny that, at all. Exactly. <laughs> the reality of it is that it's not funny. Like the fact that these sweatshops exist, you look at these people being fired, like it's framed in a bit of a humorous light. But when you think about the fact that this is a reality for the lives of some people. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not one of those like all time nationals people who raw America, but something like that makes me very thankful that I live in America. I don't live yes. in a society where something like that is considered the norm where people are treated like objects or machines instead of actual living human beings. Yes. And so thinking about that really kind of shifted my perspective on something very strange. I was seeing that even though we use things made in this fashion all the time, I think we as Americans have the luxury of not even considering that. Yeah. Let's be honest. This the this Instagram page, this company, these videos were made in a sound stage in Chinatown. Okay, this isn't real. <laughs> it's the uh, same, this is for same clicks. This is like the guy that, oh, I'm gonna let go of the balloon for the gender reveal. <laughs> uh, he's trying to go viral. That's what these people are doing. This is not a real sweatshop. Nothing is this bad. Okay. Are you sure? Well, well, if we can go back to being serious with Ryan real quick. Um, tomorrow is Veterans Day, of course. So please give thanks to all the veterans. You know, on the day um, of us recording, I should mention. Yes. Um, is it today or was it is it tomorrow? Um, today today Veterans Day was observed, but tomorrow is Veterans Day. Okay. Yeah. So so on the day of recording, yes. On the day of recording tomorrow it is Veterans Day. Um, and then when this is released on Monday, it would be last saturday so um you know always give thanks to the veterans you know because uh, if it weren't for them you know i don't yeah. have to they didn't have to go to war <laughs> okay okay no they... well they didn't that's why we're giving thanks because they didn't have to serve but they did so you know yeah. thank you okay. <laughs> scott's got scott's just <laughs> Anyway, um, if you would like uh fifteen percent off on that website, please use code NNF fifteen. You can get fifteen percent off your entire order. Um, can we send that link to Remy and try to get an affiliate deal for him? He already has a new affiliate, actually. Oh, he does. He does, which is a really cool affiliate, actually. Like, like, it's actually really cool. But I, 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 I want to go to that it's website. It's actually the perfect affiliate deal for, for him. Yes, um, really. him and you, but. You know, he had it well first. since he has it for yeah. I'm not gonna it, pull it. It is and as we can give provide context to our listeners here. Remy on his most recent episode of Remy's Roundtable, which released today, the day of recording, yep. he announced that he has a new affiliate deal with Power Pods, the fuel power rod, pods, fuel, fuel rod. rods that you get at the park. So yeah, yeah, it, it, that it, is amazing, a, amazing, um, great, great deal. Oh, uh, for him, I mean, it fits, it fits his show perfectly, unbelievably well. Yeah. Um. And kudos to him for going out and getting that one because it's yeah. a, an amazing, amazing, amazing deal. Hey, did you guys know that uh, Remy was on Monsters of the Morning this morning? Oh, he was. Yes. Oh, hey, did you guys see the awesome. finale of Loki by any chance? No, 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 no. I have no. not. I I watched no, 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 the no, first no, 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 five no, no. episodes yesterday. No, I was stuck watching Miss Marvel yet last night. So. How the was Marvels? it? How was it? Not good. Loki or Marvels? Boring. Uh, Marvel. Oh, that, I, I'll Marvels. give my spoiler. Yeah, the Marvel. Loki. Sorry. Marvels. Loki, in my opinion, the between seasons one and two, and let's just consider the characterization of Loki that we've seen previously in the MCU as well. Combine all those together, especially with the finale. The story of Loki is the best story ever told in the MCU, including the Infinity Saga. One of the single greatest finales I've ever seen in television. This is by far the best show Marvel's ever put out, including yes. the Incredible Legion yes. and the fantastic <laughs> Daredevil. And the finale is beautiful. It ties everything together perfectly. I could not be happier and more satisfied with how I, it went. I have not seen the finale yet, but it is by far the best show that Marvel I, has made. Dane, one hundred percent. And this it, it, season two blows season one out of the water. Yes, yes, um, it does. I agree. First three episodes, I thought season one was better. I think see, episode four is where things get better. Although, yeah, Kate I, Juan, pitch perfect casting. 
I think oh, season two yes. really picks up after episodes one and two, but I think I still think it's stronger than the first season. I, I yeah, mean, I, so I agree. Me, it's more of a volume one and a volume two, which is kind of yes. how the writer described it. Like the first part is just starting off getting to a cliffhanger and the second part finishes it off kind of like harry potter and the deathly hallows parts one and two like it mm-hmm. fits together so well yeah well and it doesn't like feel disparate which like I chris love. just said in in chat season two and season one uh it's just one whole story i okay. wanted it to be uh, agreed so bad um it would have been fantastic yeah but that would have been a long movie i mean think about that's all true this. that's true we, you know we got six uh, so between much, the two seasons so much story hours to so much story to tell. now here's um, what i don't understand right this year has given us some of the best things we've seen from marvel in a long time we got season two of loki which i think everyone will agree is fantastic guardians mm. of the galaxy volume three well not as good Amazing. as the first two still incredible and then we got Quantum Mania and Secret Invasion, <laughs> and as Dane was telling us, the Marvels. Like, how is Marvel so good and yet uh, yeah. so bad at the same time? To to end the Loki conversation, what I love so much about Loki is it's moving the multiverse saga. Forward. Yes, because nothing it, it else doesn't is. feel. If you haven't <laughs> seen it, it doesn't feel like you need to see it. It feels special in that sense. It's mm. not created because it needs to be created it's created because it's telling a story well, not yeah. like secret invasion like oh we have to do this like oh i have to go to the grocery store today it's oh i'm going <laughs> to the bookstore because i want to go to the bookstore well and and ryan this is why i loved uh ant-man and the wasp quantumania so much because it moved the multiverse story along oh yeah just you we've them. got so much other stuff where we're like We've got to build backstories. I mean, uh, Wakanda Forever. I just did not like. I like because Wakanda I also liked it. I, I think they did the best that they could with what they needed to do because they needed to shift. They needed to make, have a new Black Panther, and and so now we have to spend an entire movie explaining that. Uh, and I think they did a good job with that. But for me, it's I need. We're so used to Phase Three. OK, where the story moved so fast with, you know, coming from from age uh, from uh, Civil War, Ragnarok through Endgame. Hmm. Like everything moved so fast and it was it was so exciting. Yeah. And everything, everything, phase one, two and three were all coming together uh, in, in, you know, moving into Civil War and Endgame. So we're expecting that. We're expecting that. And we have to go through all of this slow character building, story building, bringing in new people, bringing in different relationships to get to Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. I'm going to disagree with you here, though, Scott. For me, certainly the larger story is significant. But in my opinion, each individual story should be excellent as well. And it should have that fantastic art. Oh, I agree. It. it shouldn't feel like you're watching something because you're doing homework, right? You watch the first Captain America movie and it helps set up the Avengers, certainly. But it also is an excellent movie in its own right. A really oh, fun period sci-fi piece. Whereas I agree. for me, Quantumania, Love and Thunder, Eternals, those didn't feel I like love, fun. They good. felt like homework. Not good movies. I love and Love I wonder, and Thunder. I wonder for us, I'm curious because Dane and I seem to have very similar opinions here. I wonder if it's a generational thing. I'm I'm curious because obviously we don't, this isn't a large enough sample size, but obviously we like Scott. You joined the MCU a little bit later, I think, than Dane right. and I did. You grew well, up in a Scott, different Scott time, doesn't so maybe have different Scott. homages. You might appreciate that Scott that Dane and I wouldn't appreciate. So I'm very curious what the reasoning for our different opinions are. I'm, I'm Scott, legitimately curious. Scott wants to be Thor, and he doesn't have love in his life. So Stop. that those two oh. things, that's why he liked. Oh. Love no, I I think <laughs> Ryan, I think that. I love the way that Marvel does storytelling where it's not just one series. It's not just one movie. It's this very large universe. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I, you know, watching the first phases one through three didn't realize that as I'm watching them until we get to civil war and Endgame. I mean, yeah, there were cameos here. There were crossovers here, but it, it was like, holy crap, I've never seen storytelling told like this mm-hmm. where, it, you know, we're going to we're going to make 85 movies and it, it's all going to be part of the same story. And I'm not a big comic book guy either uh, mm-hmm. at all. Um, Lost. 
Lost was one of my favorite television shows because I loved the way they story told where mm -hmm. it's it's present day and then flashback. And then every once in a while, you'll get an episode where it's showing something that we already know, but from a different perspective. So you get kind of the, oh, that happened. That's what caused that. So, mm -hmm. you know, at Harry Potter, the, the uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, that time traveling scene is one of my favorite scenes in any oh, movie. Oh, spectacular. That, that movie is so good. That's the best Harry That's Potter. That's the best Harry Potter by yeah. far. Yeah. Most of the Harry Potter movies are disappointing. Um, I enjoy them. <laughs> are they good films? And But I enjoy them. For me, I compare, and I can't help but compare the Harry Potter movies to the Lord of the Rings films because That's they're both true. based on yeah. great literary great books, works yeah. of fantasy. Yep. And just Lord of the Rings does it so much better. But I've never seen Lord of the Rings. So I, I <laughs> did to to wrap up this this, to, this question, why I can enjoy even these bad movies because when you guys are like, ah, oh, it wasn't very good. I'm like, I, I'm walking away going like, I loved Love and Thunder. I thought Love and Thunder was so good. I loved uh, Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. And loved, did you like sorry, Eternals? But I know, and no. Ryan completely okay, agrees with you. I'll shout out Ryan. I know he agrees with you on Love and Thunder. He gets upset when I go against Love and Thunder, so that might be part of it as well. Best but thing about Love and Thunder were the they credits. Because I feel like you and Ryan have very similar outlooks on things. Maybe. Yeah. No, we do. But I think, Ryan, what I think is going to happen is I think when we get to Secret Wars and um, or King Dynasties and Secret Wars, I think that all of this that we've sat through is going to make sense. Mm -hmm. And I think we're going to appreciate it a lot more. Just like... I did not like the first three. I did not like the Iron Man movies. Whoa. At all. Whoa. At, at there, hold on. There's, there's one very good one, and the other two are just That's fine. My first pass, I did not like them. Okay? Hmm. And, my, and that was well before I, I got you. into the MCU. However, hmm. when, I, when I was like... Worst Marvel movie for me, you know, Quantumania is really far down there. I also really... I think the first door is really bad. And really, mm -hmm. I think that I yeah, don't know that Black that Panther strong. is a bottom five, but Black Panther I, is really not a good movie. What? The, the first Black Forever Panther is, is not a good Honda movie. Forever is probably a top five, but the first Black Panther what? is nothing great. No, the first right. Black well, Panther well, movie was fantastic. I, I, I was bored the entire well, we, time. We all know why Ryan doesn't like the. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, you know, you can't say that because I like Wakanda Forever. Yeah, and what you also like Song of the South. I thought the first Thor movie was fantastic. I thought the oh, second no, one was. I hate. Eh. Second one's okay. It's second not one's great. not that great. Thor, but it's, it's Thor, better than the, the first one. The only good one. Thor movie is Ragnarok. I mean, Absolutely. I love Ragnarok, but the first Thor, it's enjoyable. I can yeah, watch no, it. No, the first but... one is just a rehash of Cars and a middling one at that. <laughs> You're right. It is. <laughs> I mean, you've got the red guy who's the good guy. You've got the mean green guy coming after him. He's stuck in the desert. Yes, He's meeting all is. these weird people. <laughs> By the way, I don't know. You, you guys aren't gamers, but uh, Lightning McQueen is in Rocket League now. So probably me and Chris are going to be uh, streaming that here very soon. Hey, bringing it back to Owen Wilson. Kachow. Yes, sir. Kachow. So I guess to Kachow. finish off our conversation here and perhaps. The yeah, because we got to we gotta end segment time because we have a. Um, we have a Especially because, you know, we all seem to enjoy fandoms. Looking at an entirely different universe that I'm experiencing through right now that's set up not nearly as neatly as the MCU. I'm working my way through Star Wars. Um, everything mm. that's been released, <laughs> Star Wars, that's um, TV and movies. And Get ready for the last trilogy, dude. Jeez. Yeah, because I've been through all the <laughs> movies. I haven't seen most of the TV shows. So I'm curious to see how poorly some of those fit together compared to... So somehow uh, Palpatine Marvel. has returned. So Exactly. Spoiler <laughs> alert, Jesus. <laughs> it came out in 2019, man. You know, you I used to be such a yet. huge Star Wars fan, a huge Star Wars fan. And I've kind of, I don't know, seven, eight, and nine really screwed it up for me. Seven was good. Eight was not good. Nine. I was loved not good. eight. I hated seven and I despised nine. Um, I know that seven is just a rehash of four, but I liked it's still seven. good. Man. I liked seven. I loved good. eight. Um, the, eight is the, terrible. The problem for me is I never got into the animated series, so I feel like oh. I'm missing out on stuff. Yes, you are. That, that, that's what I'm doing this time. That's why I'm because I've never seen the animated show. Oh, yeah, man, it's and, so and good. And to me, like, there's I think there's just too much. Mm. And I don't know. There's less than Marvel. I can tell you, there is less than Marvel. Well, yeah. Um, hot take. Without Grogu, Mandalorian is a garbage show. No, 
Yes. But without Grogu, there is no show. First of all, exactly, second. exactly. Uh, it, oh, it, it did yeah. not again, start. Yeah, and I, I, I might pause you there, Scott, because I know we we do have a bit of a time crunch for. We do. Week. We have one and minute. I, as I mentioned, <laughs> I would very much love to continue the Star Wars talk next. Literally, time. do have, have one minute since we are on a schedule on the prequels. Um, I can talk about the horrible Ewoks show from the 1980s oh, that I survived. And so I think oh, that I love be... the Ewoks. The Terrible. Ewoks movie, I think that could the be... Battle for Endor. That oh, the, the movies were <laughs> god-awful. Alex and I had a whole conversation. They're bad, terrible, but... but I love them. Yeah. So I think this would be a really right fun there. conversation to continue our fandom talk, maybe with the Nerd Archive folk if we bring them on. Yes, on yeah, episode. yes. We will have that but... conversation when they come on. Let's go ahead we and actually... transition from segment one to segment two here. Absolutely. So even though I'm hosting, I'm actually going to be turning things over to Dane. I'm really not an interview guy. Cases of Continuity is a right. solo podcast. Uh, so really, I'd like to turn things over to Dane and Scott, who are far more experienced in interviews than I am, to introduce and start off our interview with our very exciting guest for the evening. So take it away, gentlemen. Thank you, Brother Ryan. So, Amen. yes, we will absolutely pick up this conversation when the Nerd Archive, but we have a very special guest coming on. That's why we are derailing the uh, – or putting a pause – hitting the pause button, hitting the pause button for a little bit on the uh, Star Wars conversation. Admitting into the Zoom room right now, we have a very special guest straight from Cameo, straight from Instagram, straight from TikTok, straight from YouTube. It is Mr. – Jesus, Jake, gay Jesus, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> doing all right. How are you? I'm great. Oh, let me I'm turn great. up my mic a little bit. Good. So I, I notice you have two names, uh, Jagazus and, Jay, and gay Jesus. Which one should we refer to you as tonight? So Jagazus is the proper name, right? And then the gay Jesus is just what I am. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Just to explain it to the people reading my name, you know, because yeah. yeah. Jagazus might not curious. say all of it. See, yeah. <laughs> um, so we found you on Cameo uh, a couple That's episodes so cool. ago. Um, and we have a fascination with Cameo. We love Cameo. Oh. Um, we have this thing on our show where we get his name is John Roberts. He's our he's our friend. We get him to read random stuff. We have no clue who he is. He's a dollar cameo guy. <laughs> um, um, so we were when we were looking at possible people to connect with on cameo, we found you and I was like, screw, screw cameo. We need to get this guy on. So tell us a little bit about your story. Uh, tell us about um, becoming the Jugazes. All right. So I started uh, probably about three years ago being Jagazos and embracing it for all that it is. Uh, primarily on TikTok is where I started and I basically make religious deconstruction content. So it's focused on history and accurate translations, but then also just off the wall ideas like Gnosticism and things that have been buried for the past couple thousand years or hypothetical questions like if jesus were trans would you still love him mm. you know the important things and so uh just kind of riding that line in between education and making people mad on the internet mm. <laughs> and i i thought that was a space that i could fill just because of my look and obviously <laughs> i'm gay so i was like let's lean into that and just really go into the gay jesus mode <laughs> So you have kind of a, an equal balance there of uh, some things rooted in history and then also being uh, asking the silly questions. That is exactly correct. Yes, I like to be historically accurate when I can, but I'm not a scholar. So I think my main talent is bridging different topics together and making my own head canon, sure. or looking at just certain words and asking dumb questions. Kind of like you said, like, uh, for example, one of my videos was, the story of like you know the sin and eve and how now childbirth would be painful and it's like now now doesn't that imply that she give it was an yeah yeah <laughs> what's going on now and like just the questions that people will skip right over and not think about sometimes so i'm sure you're having a field day with all of the it just everything going on in politics and all the religious indoctrination with everything i'm in florida so it's all the time <laughs> yeah i know i'm sorry uh, don't <laughs> judge me for the rest of my state but uh i'm sure you're having a field day and so much content is just falling into your lap well no, it's funny that you say that because when i started on tiktok it was in 2020 because of the 2020 election sure. and my first page is actually curly gay politics 
And my entire focus was just on news around politics. And uh, <laughs> I left politics because it was too debate heavy and went into religion. So that was good. Uh, <laughs> and now I, I would say I have a personal field day with politics and I kind of try to avoid it on my account as much as possible until like a couple months from now it's going to be unavoidable I'm going to be right. yeah. chomping right. at the bit to talk about it even more yeah. so <laughs> well, and what day, I... terrifying hiding under a blanket one of the two <laughs> <laughs> what, what I love about the re religious approach from just a trying to build a content or trying to build being a creator is you're going to hit both audiences. You're going to hit the, the audiences that are going to relate with you and agree exactly with what you're saying. And yeah. then the ones that hate you because they're like, I can't believe he's saying this. And it doesn't matter. A click is a click. A view is a view. And I love that. It's brilliant. I mean, so I would agree. And it was really great for the first year until TikTok caught on. And now it's like I can't get past uh, any, any kind of 1,000K barrier unless I'm like really, really lucky for that. Mm -hmm. Every video is just thrown into the abyss because they've marked my account as high risk. And oh. because they've seen all the death threats come in and they're like, something's <laughs> going on. We should oh. probably hide this person. Because <laughs> like you said, some people. Very is angry. that real? Like you've got you actually threats? get death. Death oh, phone? daily. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. In wow. the comments and the word. DMs to my personal email, it's constant. <laughs> oh I did God. see oh, when I was doing research for this uh, interview, I looked up just Jigazus on um, YouTube and something came up. It was like Jigazus controversy. And I was like, oh. You know, that's actually anybody. Anybody who has more than 100,000 followers, I'd say the funniest thing is like if you're on TikTok, they have the recommended search bar now. Mm -hmm. And if you go to anyone's page, like if you're to look up like I Justine, the first thing that pops up on her page is I Justine controversy. Because people just want there to be a controversy, yeah. whether there is or not. They type it on every big creator. Yeah. But um, I mean, just How do you being de alive is controversy, I guess. So. Yeah. How do you deal with that, though? Are you getting death threats from people on the internet oh i just ignore them like they're usually 13 year olds in their basement and <laughs> i'm not <laughs> i'm not great at like protecting my identity don't tell me really but like you know i'm not very vp and heavy or anything but oh, so you're I telling don't... me you're not actually gay jesus oh, well see that part you're just it's true <laughs> but it's hard to get into heaven with that address so i keep you know I keep my personal information, like how to get to heaven offline. And uh, worst comes to worst, like I'm such a pacifist. If somebody wants to fight me, they can. I'll just sit there. <laughs> like I weigh a whole hundred pounds. Come at me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <laughs> let's 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 uh, talk about something non-serious real quick since we were talking about death threats. Um, I saw you have a drink there. What do you what are you drinking? Real oh, quick? what is this? This is kava, kava okay. tea from the kava okay. root. It's like a anti-anxiety relaxation thing from Fiji. It's like a ritual drink. Awesome. Uh, so what does what? <laughs> What do you turn water into? Do you turn water into tea oh, or do you, do you, <laughs> is that <laughs> right, right. question? Come there on. you go. <laughs> sure. Just yeah, no, I'm, I'm sober. So we went a little too heavy on the water into wine thing. Um, yeah. When you have, you know, easy access to alcohol like that, it can get a little out of hand. So kava. <laughs> I imagine. Yeah. It's I the that. new, it's the new Lord, the, the Lord who's not naked dancing on tables. <laughs> Okay. Unless okay. you're paying for it. That's different. <laughs> oh, that is true. He does have a cameo. So if you want to see that, you could you could pay for that. Yeah. Pay for that. I don't know <laughs> if they let that on cameo. No one's asked, but try it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I you know, I've actually never paid for a cameo. I've received cameos. Uh I don't know like if there is a criteria. I you know, I don't know. Can you say know. whatever? Can you do whatever? I think you can say whatever because Here's the thing. So I don't know why I never thought about it, but I was going by just Jagazus on Cameo for probably the first year I was there. And and just two months ago, maybe I changed my name to like Gay Jesus in addition to my app being Jagazus. 
And now so many people find me. I don't know if they're just typing in gay or they're typing in Jesus, but I'm getting a lot more orders. And from people who have no idea what my content is, yeah. they just find me on Cameo or look at my videos. Right. So I've been getting a lot of kind of, I don't want to say absurd requests, but definitely <laughs> a lot of stranger requests from people who are kind of just like, I don't want to say homophobic, but yeah, let's just say it's obvious that they're straight and they're trying to troll their straight friends into like talking about just how close they are to transitioning or how gay they are. And we're all waiting. Right. Yeah. But uh, some of them are kind of really, really sexual. And we'll type up the script. They'll give me like a full <laughs> word for word. And uh, I haven't gotten in trouble there yet. So now, I, does I that... think you can say whatever. I just don't think you can show whatever. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Does that bother you at all? Or is it just like, hey, this is fun. You know, I'm 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 down with that. Um, so I got I had a really weird one today where it was exactly that. And it was talk, it was from one brother to another for his birthday, and it was talking about how he was the product of two homosexual prostitutes, and they're both his fathers, but he can't find them. And he's married to a trans woman named Melissa. I, I rolled with it, but I make it, you can watch it, it's public. That one is a public one. So you can go to my page and just see it, how I kind of took that and changed it into something where I hit all the points and it's still somehow not offensive. I'm pretty good at that. But oh, like, obviously awesome. I'm assuming his wife probably isn't trans and that's the whole joke. And two men can't have a baby. So I don't understand how he's the product of two prostitute fathers well, but they're uh, defying <laughs> signs so it's uh, uh, everything you've heard is actually true because because <laughs> I, I was the one that sent in that request so i was know it I, you stop it. it was me was it <laughs> you no it wasn't I'll be oh honest. damn <laughs> i was really like, okay cool tell me tell me about that. <laughs> no i me, wish please. i know <laughs> um i think those ones are fun i think those are more fun than just like I, I like the pep talks and I like the, you know, I love you stuff, but the ones where they're roast or just like really absurd requests, I get to get creative and throw in stuff. Um, like even the word prostitute, I don't use that word. That was their script word. So I was like, you know, we call it sex worker, by the way. And <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm able to still put my beliefs in there a little bit. That's cool. That so cool. what came first, Instagram, TikTok? cameo i mean personally like in my my before jagaza's life i've always had you know facebook and instagram and all the jazz but my creator first attempt would be the politics page on tiktok so the 2020 stuck at home pandemic life had me looking for some kind of social outlet and facebook every time i logged in was just anger and so I went to went to TikTok and in 2020 it was very less Facebooky. Now TikTok is pretty much like Facebook. It's all fights everywhere, you know, sure. drama and fights, drama and fights. But when I was on early in 2020, it was all like the you know, in the house board and fun trends. So that's where I kind of jumped into it, I guess. Gotcha. Ryan, do you have any questions for Jagazus? I think the only major question, actually, I have two questions. <clears throat> so my first question, obviously, you told us about a really uh, wild request from Cameo that you got there. Are there any other requests that have really stuck with you from Cameo since you've been on there? Like, uh, are they outrageous? Anything super fun? Anything that really comes to mind? Yeah, there was one that was so interesting, I'll say. <laughs> I had to make a video about it on TikTok just to, like, let people know and say, like, what is going on? And it was somebody who requested that I tell someone that they had a really good time the night before, but the issue is they still have their underwear at their house and they're trying to get in contact with them, but all they have is their handle and not their phone number. So they wanted me to say to come back and grab their underwear. That's smooth. And I'm like, there's <laughs> no way. <laughs> there's no way this is real, right? But like, maybe, maybe. And I... I I posted it online and everyone's like, no, it's definitely trolling, but <laughs> it's really oddly funny. specific. <laughs> <laughs> that is very funny. I don't know that that's probably the most unique event anyone's ever asked for a cameo for on the website. 
Ah, you never I, know. I, I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah, I've seen some people who have some interesting niches on there that get a lot of cameo orders. Like people I've never heard of, and they say content creator, but then I go check them out. And they have like 5,000 followers, but they're getting 20 cameo orders a day. I don't know how they do it, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure they're filling in some some interesting niche somewhere. Now, the other question that I had for you um, so the random minor that I did in college was it has something to be uh, religious studies. And I think you're the first person I've ever heard use the word Gnosticism outside of the religious studies classes. <laughs> so I was curious, like, how do you do all of the like religious research? Do you have like uh, mm. some kind of religious, like, uh, you know, scholar type background? I'm, I'm very curious how you're able to gain all that information. No, I just I I grew up uh, in the church, like in non non denominational baptist spaces and then i left the church when i was around 14 15 shortly after i came out as gay and there's all that drama and i honestly didn't do any studying or looking into religion short of like watching zeitgeist which is incorrect on most points <laughs> until the age of 30 when I started the Degasis account and so everything that I have knowledge wise has been built on just reading and self-research a lot of it through debate and conversation especially like I, I started with things I knew I started with things that I learned 15 years ago when I was in church and then people would raise questions or try to push back on me and I'd hop online and type in the things and be like, what are they talking about? What what, what do they mean he had a twin? And then <laughs> go into a rabbit hole from there and then make a whole video about it and then a whole series and then a whole YouTube. And then it just grows from there. Now I have something like, I don't know. I had a Patreon member go to my wish list and send me 35 books off my Amazon wish list. And they are all related to religious studies. So I have a full library now of information to go through. Wow. wow. It was overwhelming. I cried. That's, that's that, very that, that was a wish list I cried over. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, just self-taught. And anyone can do it. They're always like, oh, wow. I don't know how you do that. I'm like, I just, just Google. <laughs> I mean, not just Google, like, you know, academic papers and stuff, but still. So are, are you doing the content creating full-time? Is this your full-time gig or um that's yeah, awesome I am now I, wow. I didn't for the first two years I was trying to go to school plus this full-time plus my full-time job and uh it got too crazy so I just went into content creation full-time kind of put school back on the back burner again uh because <laughs> you know there's no time like you're 50 to go back <laughs> <laughs> because I dropped out when I was like 18 to move to LA to act and then now I'm like I dropped out again at 30 so I could be a content creator <laughs> well it's just you know I have all the books I'll do the test later <laughs> right exactly <laughs> and what what did you go to school for uh originally I was going for social psychology particularly with a focus in human sexualities and a minor in theater because I thought I was so unique doing psychology and theater together. And it turns out that's the majority of people in college who are going for acting do psychology. It's like the pool of trying to understand somebody's brain helps you with characterization. Wow. And it's actually a majority of people that have a double major in that. <laughs> so that's fun. That's interesting. And are you still out in L.A.? No, no. Actually, I moved back. I'm still in California. I was born, raised in California, basically. Uh, I was in LA for 10 years. And then right, right before the pandemic hit, I actually came back home. So that's the good news, because I got to skip out on the craziness that was LA. Right. Mm -hmm. it, I went probably seven months after the pandemic started, and it was still pretty bad. Like, the streets dead empty you know what i mean right but, um i've been many times since then and it's gotten better but i heard that the first couple of months there was like people were afraid to just open the door so <laughs> i'm glad i skipped out on that <laughs> that was a weird time i remember going to Publix with my wife and just like i thought just walking out the front door i'm gonna get covid 
like oh i definitely thought yeah. it don't get me yeah. wrong but i still did it right <laughs> LA, they just didn't do it like i had a friend who everything was delivered through postmates you know what i mean like it mm-hmm. didn't matter if it was toilet paper or toothpaste like anytime he needed something he would just postmates because he was not going to go to the store and i was like but the poor postmates person <laughs> <laughs> you're killing them <laughs> Oh, you can heal sickness, so you're all, you're all I good. If you get I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> I actually haven't ever got COVID, so that's the good news. It's oh wow, there you go. <laughs> I'm a and believer now. I, I am turned a 33 I'm, I'm this year, believer. so I'm just saying, if I get killed, oh, we'll really see, because then I'll have to come back and just be like, "Told you." <laughs> <laughs> Call it my Jesus year. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of uh, not not going deep down into politics. I'm in Florida, okay, and mm-hmm. we've got a yo-yo as a as a governor who has decided to start a war with the Walt Disney Company. There's actually uh, an angry mob outside of Scott's house right now because he's talking to you. So. Right, 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 right. I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> so <laughs> what do you know about what's going on in Florida, especially in the Ron DeSantis versus Walt Disney world? uh so there i don't okay so the walt disney world so i know he's trying to war against walt disney it's just so dumb because like it's not their entire gdp but like it's a good chunk of their tax money coming from tourism specifically orlando-based tourism i mean i know disney world is only one third of the big attractions there but uh it's it's just it's just dumb he's just dumb he's just not a very good business person governor person 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 it's just yeah i made a video when the whole leprosy thing was going around in florida and in the video i said oh like too bad florida's got leprosy but they kind of brought it on themselves because they voted for someone named to satan (laughs) (laughs) See, we just think he's got a, a drag queen name, you know, uh, Rhonda Santos. Yeah, uh, Rhonda. She's very, very pissy. <laughs> <laughs> well, d- listen, don't don't hold uh, everything against. Uh, it's not all of Florida. Orlando is uh, is is very. Um, we're very liberal here in 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 Orlando. Yeah, yeah. and like Fort Lauderdale is very gay. Um, so I don't hold it against all Floridians. I just hold it against the majority who got him into office. There we go. <laughs> Fair enough. There you go. And oh my God, if he becomes president, I don't, I, I can't. He's mm-hmm. like Trump because his views are so aligned and similar, but more dangerous because he's intelligent. Yes. And I've been saying that since the start and it's only getting more and more apparent. Thankfully, I think he, starting the first debate, shot himself in the foot. So I don't yeah. think he has great chances, but who are we left with? <laughs> yeah. right, right. Nobody. Let's not even none of them are coming. We none of them. Need Jesus to <laughs> save us if that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will. I mean, I'm only 33, <laughs> so even in being Jesus, they wouldn't legally be allowed to elect me. So there's that. <laughs> That's true. You can be 110 and be president, but God forbid you're 33. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's true. Uh, um, where can our listeners find you? Give us so, all your handles and websites and all that good stuff. Yeah, my handles are at Degazus pretty much everywhere, um, except for TikTok. It, kind of. So on TikTok, I have my main page and my backup page. My main page is constantly under attack by TikTok itself, so I cannot mm. keep my name at Degazus for longer than two days. So my backup account is holding my name at Jagazas for the past uh, two months. So that's where you'll go to find me there. But if you want to find me on my main TikTok, my big TikTok, it's at Foot Washing Christ. <laughs> at Foot Washing Christ. I love that. Yes. Because at the same time, my video or my name got pulled. I had a viral video that got like 500,000 views discussing uh, well, it was actually a stitch with somebody else and then putting in my skit that I did two years ago discussing what foot washing actually means in the Hebrew context and how it's a euphemism for sex. So mm. I thought 
you know, smash them together. And then I started a feet finder profile. I was just about to ask well. you about that. <laughs> yeah. I was just about so to. I was like, oh, this is like self-promotion. We're going to talk about my viral video about my <laughs> feet finder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's just funny. Um, yeah, the feet finder hasn't, I haven't got a single anything off that. So I don't know if I'd recommend <laughs> that. They it's charge $100 to start a profile. To start a pro, oh my god! And I've made zero, so there's, so there's that. But hey, if anyone likes feet, go for it. <laughs> What's your favorite sandal brand? Um, I just wear whatever flip flops I have. I'm a huge flip flop person more than I am shoes. I don't. I think it's like part of my more autistic side. I don't like socks. I don't like certain textures. I feel claustrophobic in shoes a lot of times, so I don't have a. It all. It would also probably feel weird walking on water with a. Uh with shoes I would no think. you have to do that one barefoot yeah 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 otherwise the, it's like the just sliding yeah. around exactly yeah, no, no, no. but i do have jesus sandals i don't know where they're at but they <laughs> they hurt i don't understand why i typed in jesus sandals and like they have like the the slider kind of thing going on and they're cracked leather so uh -huh. they really look really like good in the desert sand you know but uh they have stubs on the inside of them that are supposed to massage your feet, but they're pointy and not rounded. So they just stab your feet. And I think maybe that's what they meant by Jesus sandals. You have to go through the pain of walking like Jesus. <laughs> I, <laughs> I get I, I think it that's now. Right. I but... think that's right. They should have put that in clear text on the Amazon listing. So I knew. <laughs> yeah, I definitely... think. <laughs> Well, I, I'm looking at my notes here at the very bottom. It says, fuck you, Dane. I don't know what that question, what's that question? Uh, it's not a question. Just, just my feelings towards you. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Jake, Jake, Jesus, that sounds you. a lot like my cameo request. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing. They won't give me notes, names, or anything. It just says, fuck you, Dean. I'm like, okay, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, this was fun. Thank you. Thank you, G Jesus, for coming on. We're gonna have to have you on another time. This was so much oh, fun. I love it. I love just hanging out and getting yeah. to know people. And you all seem like good people and I enjoy laughing back and forth. This is nice. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I thank think, you so I think much. A full, I think a full episode is needed. I think full I yes. will be available for that. Yeah. And I will bless you all before I leave, you know, yeah. with a game and oh we do have one more thing we do have we do have time for one more thing so oh. um the third segment real quick i mean it's not really a third segment because it's going to take like 10 minutes probably um i wanted to have a debate real quick i wanted okay. to have a i wanted to have a debate because i thought this was interesting so i think i know what you're going to answer um Jigazus, but should wine or grape juice be served at communion what do you think we'll no. start scott we'll start with you I listen um as a first grader uh, or second grader whatever when I received my first communion in uh in the Catholic Church I couldn't wait to get some of that church wine which was real wine so I am all for keep the real wine okay Scott is team wine Ryan what do you say the sophisticated gentleman I should say what do you what do you say yeah so back when um I was an undergrad at a Catholic school, even though I am no longer Catholic. Uh, it was entertaining having the whole area with the church wine just available um, because I'm sure there were many people who would break in and try to get some of the wine for the parties. <laughs> I do not know. That's true. Um, so, you know, I, I say keep it up. If if the folks haven't stolen it, you know, more power to the church there. And if they have, then clearly there's a system that's working. So keep the wine. Yeah, I'm I'm for sure saying the one. Absolutely. It's the only reason I will I don't go to church, but if I if I would go to church, it would be because of the the communion wine. <laughs> it would be because of the communion wine. Uh, Please do not go sit through a two hour sermon <laughs> to get a shot glass of wine. That's if literally that. like point zero 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 five percent alcohol <laughs> when you're measuring for volume. Like just go buy a bottle of wine. It'll be okay. <laughs> Now, no, I would I'm say saying the wine no. Doesn't... That's my vote because a you're drinking my blood in your head. That's you're true, drinking yeah, my blood. True, like, what true. kind of cannibalistic freaks are y'all? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, it's right. blood magic. And how many times is witchcraft like saying no? Don't be a witchcraft. And then you're gonna do blood magic <laughs> by ingesting <laughs> it. At the very least, just like rub it on your forehead and call it a day. 
No, I think it's weird. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, Ryan, you were hosting this episode, so you can do the outro for me. <laughs> yeah. So first off, Chigazus, uh, what can you tell us about what's upcoming on your TikTok page? Anything exciting that your viewers can look forward to? Good question. Um, so I've been kind of not doing series a little bit, but I recently stumbled on, I guess, a thought that I want to do. So I'm going to do like a 10 part series about the origins of Satan and miscommunications. I talked about it multiple times on my channel but I've never done it in a skit format where I like have me talking to Jagazus which is kind of Ooh. more of my style and how I got known and then I got lazy and now I just yell at the camera without my outfit on and <laughs> so I'm gonna do like an actual like fun version of why Satan is not a character and I think people should look forward to that my main drive right now is youtube um it's the only place i'm verified so i feel safer making content there <laughs> but uh <laughs> i'm trying to get more into long form like explainers going more in depth into some of these things as uh, my goal again i'm not a scholar but i have a propensity for being able to take complicated topics and break them down to like a layman's term mm -hmm. so i want to be able to do that more for people yeah, that sounds really super thing. awesome. <laughs> no, that's super neat. I think it's really, really cool to see somebody explain the ideas behind religion like an actual modern way instead of like with like the old English that you see in like the King James Bible and all that. So that's awesome. Scott, yes, what's coming yes. up on There's the... definitely a place for that. Like I have a lot of scholar friends, but like God bless them. Even me, my eyes will glaze over when they start talking about different participles and conjugations in Hebrew and why this dot over the letter changes it to mean. I'm like, <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, Scott, what's coming up on the No New Friends podcast? Oh, so much, so much. Uh, you know, more more shenanigans and adulting. Uh, we just did our very first NNF Reacts on Twitch. That was a lot of fun. And uh, in December, I don't have an exact date, but in December, we will have Andrea Barber, a.k.a. Kimmy Gibbler from Full and Fuller House on. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, as soon as I have the confirmed date, it will be happening. I think it's December 6th. Um, but I will. I thought you were going to say we're going to do the Christmas carols. Like, no, we're not. Yeah, that's probably not. Gonna <laughs> that's never <this> happening. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting! I know how much you love the classic sitcoms as well, Scott. So I'm super excited for you, man. Absolutely. And Dane, what's coming up on Big Beautiful Diz? Oh, I don't know. No, I do. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, tomorrow or Saturday because this is releasing on Monday. This will be already be out. It's my review on the Marvels, mm. um, newest Marvel movie. It's not good. So tune in. <laughs> I look forward to hearing you. Back it's not a, it's not good. So tune into that video. Well, <laughs> with the better, the worse the movie gets, the better the review is. <laughs> That's fair. And over on cases of continuity, I am nearly. Oh, let me get. Let me guess. Let me guess. James Bond. Yes. Although that that is also the concept behind my show, digging into <laughs> the full franchise. So uh, I am. About halfway through the Pierce Brosnan era, once this releases, my new episode on The World Is Not Enough will be releasing. And then as we finish up Pierce Brosnan, we'll be going through the Daniel Craig era in December. So that should be fun as well. So on behalf of Jagazus, Scott, and Dane, thank you all for joining us. My name is Ryan. Thanks for listening to Creators United, and we'll see you next time. And Scott, love you guys. we love you. We love you, Scott. Thank you all.